Hello out there and happy Valentine's Day, you wildlings, wherever you are. Welcome to Thrones of Game. This is the Game of Thrones podcast that dares to watch the series backwards. If you've never heard the show before, let me explain there. Friend, my name is BT Calloway. I've already seen the entire show and joining me is Elliot J. O'Neill, a man who had never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones until we started watching in reverse order. Elliot, how are you doing? Lick my bloody heart, Ada. <laughs> oh man, yes. We just watched season two, episode nine, Blackwater. Oh, uh, man, for those of you playing at home, this is the Battle of Blackwater, but Elliot J. O'Neill, what just happened? Uh, well, to quote the song Blackwater Park by Opeth, which ah. we were talking about at the end of the last episode. Looked up the lyrics. Roar! God oh. damn! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this is a good episode. Like, wow, there's so much episode to get through here. Yeah, like, I suspect we might actually get through it a bit quicker than most because we mm. don't have to cover, like, this is a single... Small individual yeah. things. Yeah, we barely... I, like, we go from character to character like normal, but it's all surrounding this one single event. So even though there is a span of time, I was sitting there in the beginning wondering, it starts with Sir Davos on the ship, uh, you know, and you know, I know where he's going. It's like, okay, is this going to be, surely we're going to cut away some other things. This is maybe the night before the night there. No, no, this is the night they arrive. Yeah. It's the whole thing. I think that's so good. It keeps, even knowing what happens in this episode, even knowing how it ends, there's such a great tension running through the whole thing. It was fantastic. It's astounding. This is just... Um, brilliant and brutal and didn't, like, it was definitely excessive, but it always felt like the point, and I was gripped the whole time. This is a contender for my favourite episode now. Yeah, me too. I mean, I know like, we, I think it was the season four or three opener, or our closer. Yeah, um, it was the season four finale that yeah, really yeah. had an impact on me, and I think, yeah, it stood out as one of my favourite episodes, which... Could probably still be because I think that's more true to what Game of Thrones is being, mm. you know, uh, seven to ten non-connected groups. But for one of the battle episodes, which I think this series has like three, mm, like three really big ones, yeah, yeah, or something like that. I haven't counted. Well, even the episodes that have like a major battle taking up like half the episode, where there's been a handful of those, mm. this one's just standing so far and above. There is, oh, let's get into it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, can you pick out of this episode an MVP? Tyrion. But, Tyrion. Oh like, my gosh. Yes. Employee of the month is the constant joke, but like no question that Peter Dinklage had to do some heavy fucking lifting in this episode. And he certainly did. Yeah. He had, he had to do it all. Like he had to do the rousing speech. He mm -hmm. had to uh, have his own moments of self-doubt and self-reflection yeah. and throwing himself to the wolves and um uh, it's just everything about his performance and mm -hmm. Even the part where he got sliced, I like. Yeah, that, I know he's gonna be okay. Yeah, but you uh, but felt, I didn't. You felt that 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 hurt physically. Like that cut goes across his face, and he's just so shocked and just mm. lies down. Is just bleeding and doesn't even know. It's it's great. Well, for so many graphic deaths and cuts in this episode, where yeah, limbs and heads are coming off everywhere. Like his is that simple thing of when. You know, like, it's simple as when you get a paper cut and you're mm. like, oh, that probably wasn't that bad. And then you look down at your fingers like, holy oh. fuck, am I oh, reading a book of knives? That's really going there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he has the same cut, just like a total stunned moment. You can imagine even from his perspective, it's all just flashed black and then mm. white for a moment. He's just, ah. Yeah. Yeah. And the way he falls and God, the confidence that he does, does roll into battle when his plan's working and then just the drop in his face when he's just, oh, fuck me. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, they really uh, stopped that battering ram and everyone's cheering and I like how they're all cheering, half man, half man. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Um, he's it reminds finally... me of the finale when everyone's like, Bran the Broken will be our new leader. Are we, are we set to... on that name? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's how I like how that's how Tyrion launched in this. Like, they say I'm a half man. What does that make the rest of you cowards? Like, mm. oh, yeah, they immediately just gets their attention by insulting them. That's kind of the, what I like about this episode and why I think it might be my favorite is to talk about, like, I don't want to talk about an MVP in terms of one character, one scene. It's sure. the entire, it's all their scenes for this episode because it's all seemingly taking, spl taking place between like a three hour span. So it's not entirely clear, but. Yeah. Um, it's all part of the what it's all connected to itself so i really like that my mvp i think i'm gonna throw to drunk cecil lannister <laughs> oh man again lena Headey just killing it but just in such an interesting way it's just mm. so she's gathered with all the women down in the uh the keep and is just uh hanging out and drinking and you know just and i think she has her first talk with sansa that we've seen all right as far as i remember at least um, and is all just, oh, come here, dear. Now, what's what's on your mind? Oh, you're a little bit worried you're going to get murdered. Don't worry, this man's here for our protection. But as the thing goes on, she gets drunker and starts going, you know, he's not 
here to protect us, protect us. Mm. He's here to kill us all if they actually win. And it's like, oh, shit. Dark. Uh, and just does it with this kind of drunken, oh, that's the way of things, blah, blah, blah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's that I've referred to her in, this se- is in these seasons of being far more Valley Girl. This is the Valley Girl who has a moment of stopping, has that, that deep and meaningful drunk. Yeah. Where she's like, oh, God, everything's fake, isn't it? Yeah. I did think these scenes were actually kind of weird, the way that, like, no one else is paying attention to what Sansa, because she's not talking quiet enough. No. Uh, I, th- I think you've got that disconnect between how you have to stage a scene versus the implication of what it is. So mm. you want your actor to be a little drunk and a little loud, but you don't want all the other women reacting to it constantly. That's going to get distracting from the scene. So No, definitely. It's, it's the opposite of the sitcom, uh, you know, broke guys who can't afford a house somehow have this enormous place and that's mm. because they can, they need to have one group over here having a chat while the other group over there don't hear them it's you know a practical thing this is doing the realistic thing but then having the fact that no one knows is this conversation be the unrealistic yeah. part um but uh yeah i really like cersei in these moments as well i got like lots of drunk auntie vibes from it as well oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh her conversation with shay like what I like about this is, yeah, someone who's definitely inebriated and they're mm. talking a bit probably more than they should, but then they still have the wherewithal to notice, you know, the yeah. the whole curtsy thing. There's yeah. a great, yeah, where she's all like, oh, you curtsy terribly, shows how to do it properly, and then it's like, I don't know you, who are you exactly? And she's like, yeah. oh, you know, I came to King's Landing 10 years ago. So you went from arriving here as a stranger 10 years ago to being in the Red Keep in 10 short years without learning to curtsy. Hmm. And she's like kind of the under the, the, the subtext being, you have other skills, don't you? Yeah. You're, you're here for another reason, right? <laughs> she's like basically saying, I've already sussed you out without having to say so. Yeah. Yeah. Really good bit. I really enjoyed that. Ah, man. So if that's MVPs, I mean, unless you want to throw like a, a well, just one mention. last on Cersei, like, I had no idea until she was, like, thumbing the poison that that's who the poison was for. I was just... And in that moment, I'm just... Oh, God. Stomach's dropping out. And obviously, I know it's fine. I see that kid who becomes king and, you know, he mm-hmm. offs himself all by himself. Yeah. And But, yeah, oh, so harrowing. Yeah, it's a... Ten- even though, even knowing how it ends and remembering that, you know, uh, Tywin Lannister bursts in and announces, everything's fine, I'm here. Mm. Um, with, it's still a intense moment. It's yeah. good. And, uh, yeah, they definitely changed the actor who played Tommen. Cause, uh, it wasn't... Oh. That's... Yeah, that's Tommen. That's, I, I thought it looked enough like him. No, nah, I reckon the um, kid who plays the, you know, uh, Tywin's nephew... Uh, or, great nephew or whatever he is that he, one that where we got confused by a yeah, kid. yeah yeah because he looks so much like him i'm sure that kid replaces this kid interesting like, i gotta i'll double check but um i'm i'm certain because mm. the other one looks way too much like him for the, if, and, m- he looks more like grown-up tommen than yeah. this kid does it has they have to have changed so where was um tywin lannister this whole time by the way Cause... that's the part i'm not really he does really show up at the last minute and this is the only part i have a problem with because it feels very rushed and obviously that's because they're out of time yeah if this had been like a netflix show or a streaming service now where they could have run it for an extra 10 minutes i think they would have but... or if it was game of thrones season six and they had that sort yeah. of clout where they started doing the longer episodes. yeah exactly when they could say uh come on we're game of thrones we can run for as long as we want yeah um, yeah, it's just a very rush. I'm not even sure what's going on at a certain point because we see some riders show up, but I thought the riders were on Stannis' side because one of them has a helmet with um, the, the deer antlers, which is Stannis' house. So oh, right. It, it should be the lion if it was, I think. I don't know. Like I said, I was confused. I did think it was a bit unclear, but then, yeah, when um, uh, Finn, uh, what's his fucking name, uh, the Iron oh. Fist, uh, when he shows up, uh, the fucking Tyrell. The Tyrell yeah, yeah, yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when he shows up, it's like obvious. Oh, okay, the, these guys that came into the rescue. And even it was a surprising moment. I'm like, oh, so that's how. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, one of those things that uh, yeah, helps fit the puzzle pieces together. And I literally didn't see it coming, even though a lot of things in this show yeah. I do get the privilege of seeing coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, I think, my only other gripe on this one is, you know, she. Cersei's about to put the poison to Tommen's lips. The doors crack open and she stands up and is like, oh, it's over. And it's like, no, you just saw soldiers burst through the door when you were just ready to poison your son. Surely you'd be like, oh, they're here now. Yeah. So I kind of wish she'd like stood up, held Tommen under one arm and like had the thing to just like 
wait, about to pour it in, waiting to confirm her suspicions, whether who this was, mm. and then sees Ty, uh, Loras or Tywin, and then is like, okay, good, and then drops. I do like the shot of her dropping the poison. It's very, yeah, for, uh, for the audience, it's very final. It's like, and scene. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it did feel like they rushed to the ending, and which is surprising, especially when they did take their time in so many other places. Yeah, I th- again, I think they had to, and they're like, you know what? Just stick the ending. It's maybe it's yeah. abrupt in the books. Who the hell knows? Uh, I also want to throw a quick uh, MVP to Joffrey because he switches from being a total cunt to being a coward, but like being a scared kid coward. And mm. I have the smallest bit of sympathy for someone I really don't don't like. Yeah, because he's clearly so out of his depth, and he's just standing there and it's like, "Oh, your mother has said to come back to his room." Oh, oh, really? Oh, I, but guys, I better get, I better go. I really want to stay here and fight, but I'm going to go. It's yeah, like just taking the out. And I think what's sort of easy for an audience to hate about Joffrey is that, yeah, he acts well at being a petulant cunt, but, like, we can sort of, I don't know, uh, allow our minds to think that that's what he's like all the time and, oh, I want to get him, but this is him showing that he's fucking got acting chops because there is a certain fear that he is getting across um, that is so unique and not... uh, There's a lot of nuance in his performance here, and I'm glad because... Uh, even I've sort of not looked at Joffrey's actors acting as, you know, a performance sort of getting mm. lost in the moment of, yeah, seeing him as a petulant cunt. But this was, yeah, showing his range. And, yeah, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. And a real moment of sympathy is like, yeah, you're like, well, I mean, not actually 10, but basically yeah. 10. <laughs> and you don't know what's happening. You're scared. And, yeah, it's it's a moment. But that said, he's also got the moment of total cuntiness where, oh, yeah. uh, you know, he's he's... Like someone walks past and says, Sansa, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, the king asked to see me? And then he rocks up and he's like, oh, Sansa, kiss my sword. <laughs> it's really big. He's all like, <laughs> you know, I don't have a lot of time because I've got a whole battle to defend. But however, I do have time to be a cunt. <laughs> he somehow fitted into his schedule. Um, I call my sword ass fucker. <laughs> yeah. Because it heart eater. Because God, he's just that edge lord. Mm. Um, but yeah, he has a whole, you know, kiss the sword. And he's like, ah, and later on you can kiss it when I've got Stannis's blood on it. And she has that little dig at him like, oh, you're going to be on the front lines are you yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. stannis yourself will you and she's all like i don't have time to talk to stupid girls and she's like oh shit i overstepped my mark didn't i okay mm. yeah no of course you will and he's like yes and uh as, and, but then getting a quick jab as well because he's like of course kings fight on the front line my brother fight it fights in the front line and never loses and he's like yes one day you'll lick your brother's blood from this blade as well mm. but in there as well i think he's playing the fear like, oh yeah that he is. It's re- dawning on him that he's entering into battle, and then when yeah. he gets there and sees the actual horror of it, he's not this kid that relishes in uh, the murder and uh, battles and stuff that you know I'd seen him claim he would. Mm. Like, yeah, in this moment, he is a scared kid. He's like, oh yeah, people get stabbed in these, don't they? Like, yeah, fatally. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like I mean, even though he sort of had a bit of glee at the fucking giant green explosion mm. like when it came to his shores that's when he started freaking out and yeah oh yeah when they actually land he's like oh there's so many and they're like no we can shoot them with arrows it's cool so like, no running away yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh, did she want anything no, no i'm gonna I'll, I'll check anyway <laughs> you know i'll just see uh, maybe they have some cookies in the back we didn't know about and i can offer you those <laughs> that'll bring morale yep that's uh, everybody good loves a good chewy cookie <laughs> all right uh we'll move on to nudity there was a little bit of nudity uh, yeah, so a little like, bit of nudity to, uh, in the front load of the episode to yeah. <laughs> ease us into the horrors to come. Even out the everything else. Yeah, Bronn's just hanging out in a brothel with some other men, and they're all singing Reigns of Castlemere and, you know, uh, having a good drink. Is this the only song? Like, <laughs> Kind of. It shows up a lot. <laughs> it feels like it's showing up more around now. I don't know. Maybe they got sick of it towards yeah. the back end well, of the show. I mean, we don't know how long it's been around or how long popular songs were in the charts. Mm. So uh, maybe it is just like, you know, Shake It Off or something like that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just blowing up right now or whatever the popular popular music of the day is. Was that what Pod was singing when we saw Pipes of Podrick? Or? No, no. He's singing uh, Jenny of the Old Stones. All right. I do really like that one, actually. Uh, cannot, I, they don't have a version of just him singing it. It's really annoying. Oh, really? Yeah. You can find Florence and the Machine singing it. You can find a Ugh. thousand covers on YouTube, but you cannot find just the guy who plays Podrick doing the full version because there's a second verse he doesn't do, and I really like his version. Mm. Anyway, that's me yelling about stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, she, the, 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 yeah. Like Sorry, him. just while we're here anyway, what about um, the Nationals version of Rain of Castamere? You- yeah. Big oh, fan of that one too. Oh yeah, huge! I tacked it onto the end of the Red Wedding episode. 
Ah. Yes, for those who stayed during the credits. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, obviously, big fan of the National myself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, have them do a, you know, Matt Berenger's very uh, baritone voice and good stuff. Yeah, I was... I was trying to pick who it was, and I said to her at the time, like, it sounded like a young Leonard Cohen. Mm. Like, you know, everybody knows. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. That like kind of cr- half crooner to him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely. As mentioned, uh, Serge Tankian also has a version. Oh. It's pretty good, especially in the second verse, where like he kind of lets loose a little bit more. The rest of it, it doesn't quite fit his pace, I don't think. He's, right. Uh, it, it, it it feels like he's restrained against the, the, mu- the melody of it. Mm-hmm. He is like one of those singers that definitely has his low voice. He and does. that is high! <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And it's just, yeah, he, he doesn't quite know where to go in that song, I don't think. But it's still a decent version. Yeah, it. I did find it like a bit of tonal dissonance from what just happened, though. Mm. I would have... Yeah, it was very weird to end this battle and then with the big triumphant Tywin walks in and then cut to the very somber Reigns of Castlemere national version, so... Yeah, it's, it's just one of these, like, uh instrumentation things again mm. like with the last one where it was like you know game of thrones is mostly brass and strings and whatever and yep. all of a sudden it's punk rock and guitars and shit like yeah. what the fuck's happening that's you know stand out to me as being weird forever <laughs> yeah but this was like the opposite version where it was mm. like mostly droney keys or whatever and yeah baritone uh semi-poet croony sort of style but like yeah it was just a, at a bit of odds with yeah the last the battle, thing we I saw think. was yeah characters being elated or grim battle and mm. then having slow and somber yeah a little weird touch don't get it but oh well yeah not that the end credits really matter but it's just you know <laughs> yeah maybe they're like oh guys we got the national to do one let's yeah. check it in you know i mean again season two they might have still been a little starstruck mm. uh, and they also did uh the bob's burgers 100th episode didn't they uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they do a bit of Bob's Buskers. So they do Gravy Boat and uh, mm. bad stuff happens in the bathroom. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. The National, uh, they're going to just release a TV album soon, aren't they? I hope so. Yeah, the <laughs> clip is great too. It's got the band all mm. Bob's burger fied and yeah, yeah. Ma- uh, singing without his pants on. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, man, let's see. Where do we go? Oh, no. So, any more nudity? I mean, just, um, you know, some some good little quotes back and forth. I like how she's all like, oh, your nose has been broken so many times. He goes through discussing yeah. all the times he broke, he's had his nose, his nose broken while undressing her. But then I kind of like the nudity of she just sits on his lap and the scene isn't about nudity anymore. It's there. Yeah. But it's just kind of like, and she's naked. Yeah. And it's the same thing we've talked about where there's blurry naked women in the background mm. as well, where there's no focus. It's just, it then becomes about Bron and the Hound, and it's like... Yeah, this kind of standoff they're having of mm. the Hound walking in to get a drink and just killing the mood entirely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they have a pretty nice tense back and forth. I'm like, oh, have they ever fought? I don't think they ever... They I don't think mm. they, they definitely don't fight from this point on. Um, and then, yeah. No, this was another episode where there were a couple of pairings that I don't think I'd seen yeah. at all, and this was one of them. No, Bron and the Hound, that's a, that's an interesting throwdown. I would like to see that. But the Hound has a great line of like, you know, you come in here and you say you like your, your women and your drink, but what you really like is killing, and we're not mm. too different in the end. And he's like, you're just like me, only shorter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then Bron's like, and quicker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he can't help but be a smart ass. And- oh, yeah, he's got it. Uh, but yeah, I do even like in that when he goes and quicker, that was like the joke that didn't land with everyone else because yeah, the hound is yeah. just that intimidating of a presence that oh, yeah. he can literally suck all the fun out of the fact, room. I don't think we've ever given MVP to the hound and like a general medal of honor. Yeah. Oh. He, he is so good at this. Like I would be intimidated as hell. I'm intimidated watching the show mm. and it, there's like a screen in 10 years between the two of us. <laughs> so yeah. No, definitely. And oh, actually he's a part of the other odd pairing that I saw in this episode, which was yeah, the hound and Sansa. Yeah, and that was a pretty intense. So, uh, you know, uh, what is it, Loras? No, the other, uh, Lor- yeah, it is Loras, who runs in after getting shot with one arrow. Come on, <laughs> and is all like, "Oh no, they're at the beach. Maybe you should run." And you know, Cersei leaves, and uh, Sansa then gets urged out by Shay. He's like, "No, you need to run because if you stay here, this guy who's ill in pain, who is on um, Arya's list, and that's oh, who, right. and that's who like he's very narp." face yeah <laughs> um despite not being that actor and that actor being in this show and being a different character weird <laughs> but he's just this very stony face dude just standing there the whole time mm-hmm. um yeah and he's like look he'll kill everyone in this room when it, when they if the soldiers get close because that's what he's told to do whereas stannis if stannis finds out that who you are he'll spare you because you're a bargaining chip and so go off hide in your own room you'll be fine and then yeah bumps into the hound and they have a nice little back and forth 
of the hound being like, nah, fuck all this, I'm leaving, and yeah. I can save you, and she's all like, mm, no, but I do like her moment of defiance of just, you won't hurt me, and yeah. he's all like, yeah, you're right, I'm not gonna. <laughs> and yeah, the hound has hurt a lot of people, but yeah, that's, good on if you're walking away from that one. That's what makes the hound fun, he's he's uh, you know, he's got his code somewhere in there, yeah. it's, uh, you know. Yeah, and I guess that was sort of the interesting part of his journey with Arya sort of mm. watching him find it and having her humanize him a bit more because yeah he seems like just such a brute killer and even in this moment like he's really showing that whole you know understanding of the world around him you know and <laughs> status is a killer this guy's a killer they're all fucking killers and they kill yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, and yeah just delivered with such great intensity yes i back giving him a medal yes i'm for that just general honorary medal bling <laughs> Um, seeing as most of this entire episode is violence, I'm going to hold that till the end. Uh, oh. any, any quotable moments you want to go through? Quotable moments? I, I, I queued a couple. Um, go for one then while I find one. Uh, yep, so there's a great bit between Tyrion and Brom where he's like, just because I pay for your service doesn't mean, doesn't mm. diminish our friendship. And he goes, oh, if anything, it enhances it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> delicious. Uh, it's a great little bit. Yes, we're friends. Like, well, good. Yeah, Bron just fucking can deliver a one-liner. Like, he really can. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't uh, be surprised if that guy was also a stand-up comic. Yep, uh, there's a great bit. So there's a, again, the whole kind of Tyrion MVP. This whole mm. thing starts with him in bed with Shay, and she's asleep, and he's like lying awake, and she's like, "Oh, are you nervous?" He's like, "Yeah, if they breach the walls, they're gonna burn every Lannister they find. That includes me." So yeah, and again, it's like that conflict of he may not like his family, but they are his family, and he's there with them regardless. There's something nice about that, and there's a great little bit where he just. She says, tries to say something comforting. He's just all like, you can't fuck your way out of everything. She says, I have so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't write full quotes. Like, I, I really have mm-hmm. to do some weird interpretations of my... So I don't have anything, Shane, but sorry. It's yeah, so a long I, way I got, I got two more. Cool. Uh, there's a great bit where uh, the hound, when the hound leads the charge of men out, he yells, uh, any man that dies with a clean sword, I'll rape his corpse. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. I mean, I believe it as well from that Oh, uh, and if those firearms get <laughs> anywhere near me, I'll strangle you with your own guts. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fantastic. And yeah, finally, just Tyrion's rousing speech of just, there are brave men locking at our door. Let's go kill them. <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, I know we, we can go behind them and fuck them in the ass or whatever it was. <laughs> just, ah, yep. uh, what a good rousing speech. <laughs> See, that's how you do it. Theon Greyjoy in the later episode, who, to be fair, I think was meant to not be doing it well. Mm. Uh, but this is a good rousing speech. It's good fun. I do like it always requires a rousing speech to just get people together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun. All right. Um, so yeah, let's move on to violence which i don't normally yell however there's a lot of violence here oh man let's start with the big fucking green explosion and from this moment on i got a smile on my face that did not leave until the episode ended that's oh, yeah. fucking awesome this looked incredible and i love that even again the tension of this episode is, is amazing so this ship one ship is sailing out and they're all like uh knock arrows and draw and they're just waiting like it's empty. What the hell? And then it goes a little bit faster. So it's leaking. Um, the, the what do they call it? Wildfire out the back. Mm, mm. Or you know, if you're uh, uh, familiar with Acquisitions Incorporated, green flame. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, just a bit for the well me to understand <laughs> uh, when I re-listen to this. Don't know if we have got any other crossover going on there. But yeah, and then just boom. <laughs> yeah. If I remember correctly as well, I thought the um, when they used this to blow up the Citadel... Sept. 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 It looked a little silly. Like, this one I thought was artistically beautiful. Like, oh, yeah. It's just going against the indigo of the night sky and, mm-hmm. like, and then they start introducing actual fire next to it to show its roll on it. Oh, it's yeah. just... It looked incredible. And just these ships getting obliterated. And then I really like the ships collapsing as well, because mm. some of them haven't sunk immediately. They're just so damaged, they just start falling apart, taking some dudes down with them. And it just looks, it looks amazing. Yeah. And yeah, uh, Davos as well, just getting fucking KO'd for this round. Yeah. And we uh, meet Davos's son uh, for the first time, obviously, because he dies in this episode. Uh, he's on Oh, the- was well, he his son? I assume that was, because I know Davos's son dies in this battle. And uh, oh. he was talking to him, and he seemed like a nice boy yeah too bad they Uh, argued about the amount of gods yeah and obviously uh he's been converted over to galaxy brain Mm. but uh yeah it's that's that guy okay now we see him yeah all right well yeah this was one of the scenes that of the episode that i thought i would have (laughs) cut like i get that it's sort of 
you need to do calm before the storm you know show um the uh, the human element of the soldiers that are about to go into battle and all yeah. that sort of stuff but it Which, was a bit wishy-washy for me a little bit but again i guess we like i barely remember this guy yeah. i don't even remember seeing him on the first watch through but i forgot a lot of characters because it's hard to know who's important until sometimes they're dead yeah exactly <laughs> um yep so they talk about faith for a little bit we get almost a shot for shot recreation of saving private ryan when we go down into <laughs> Is the, that like, right well i mean it looks like it because you know i mean to be fair most battle scenes tend to look the same but um hmm. There's padding across these soldiers, all just, you know, holding their gear and looking, uh, thinking ahead of what's going to happen, and then one vomits, and it's like, yep, that's exactly what happens in Saving Private Ryan. Not just vomits, but vomits into an overflowing fucking crate barrel. Like... Just a bucket of vomit, we have to assume. I mean, maybe they pre-filled it for effect. I don't know. <laughs> no, the actors actually filled that up with their own vomit. <laughs> fucking methods up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the way you get it across, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> Stannis Baratheon's army are all Stannis Lasky. <laughs> I don't think he was a method actor guy. Never mind. <laughs> no, you had that 100%, dude. Stanislavski yep. was uh, meth. Well, he was um, very much in the vein of it has to be real and uh, mm. drawing from personal experience. So the method acting is like the extreme of Stanislavski, if I understand it correctly. There we go. My smart pun landed. <laughs> yep, yep. You, just, just stick with it, man. You would have been fine. <laughs> um, yeah, but good, cool. Uh, but yeah, in the other calm before the storm moment, Varys and Tyrion as well. Oh, yeah. This just really makes me lament that Varys never made a more outward power play, you know? Mm. He just sort of felt like he bowed his time throughout the series until he got burnt to a fucking crisp. Well, he was never trying to win the throne, I don't think. He was all like, I want to see the right person up there. Mm. Uh, which for a while he was, you know, backing Tyrion, and then he switched to Daenerys for reasons. And uh, yeah, it, then he was on fire. The yeah. End. Yeah. Although, uh, interesting... Um, fan theory about Varys is that he's actually a squid person because you never see his legs and he makes some vague reference when someone says they'll throw him in the ocean he's like oh if you throw him in the ocean you might be unpleasantly surprised <laughs> something like that. there's more to it than that but um obviously never came about but nah. it's okay i didn't need my cock i'm very into hentai <laughs> <laughs> i mean he found a way out that's all good i did like the foreshadowing as well i will tell you about how i got my dick cut off one day yep how i got cut word for word yep uh but yeah even then he's got a great line it's like i always hated the bells they signal invasions and death of kings and Tyrion's like and weddings like exactly <laughs> same thing actually i was thinking that when davos goes uh, someone goes oh the bells and he's like well they don't mean surrender and i just wanted him to go it means a wedding <laughs> oh my god Wait, who is it did anyone bring anything Fuck! Oh, we've got to turn back and get a proper present. <laughs> Can't just throw, show up here with thousands of men and no gift. Mm -hmm. uh, also, what that... are we going to give them? The puke bucket? <laughs> <laughs> so we could give them the puke. That was a joke. <laughs> Can't give them the puke bucket. We all contributed. That's, that's true. We all pitched in and got you this bucket of puke. <laughs> that's why you let us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. Uh, also in this scene, there's a bit where uh, Pod's putting on Tyrion's armor, and I like that Tyrion is at this point his hand to the king, and his armor has this kind of hand theme going all around. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, and just a quick bit on armor, because we also see uh, Seesaw is wearing hers, and she's got yeah. uh, what what you might call boob plate, where each boob is, is cupped by an armor that kind of goes you know in the middle. Uh, so I recently watched an interesting uh, YouTuber called uh, Jill B B Rup. B e a r u p Bayrup. I'm not sure. Point is, she um, is a fight choreographer, and so like analyzes movie fights and talks about them. She was talking about boob plate armor, how it's fucking terrible because it directs a blade directly to your heart if you get stabbed in the boob. Oh right. And if you fall down, you're gonna crack your sternum. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense. So obviously Cersei's is more decorative because, but even then, she is wearing it for protection of some degree. Mm. And uh, no, it's garbage. So don't wear that, apparently. <laughs> so you'd want one that doesn't exactly shape, it just like contours. A, yeah, they're just domes over the boobs uh, yeah. that would deflect a blow away mm. uh, like armor is supposed to. Yeah, it kind of draws a target as well, yep. doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, that was something like, oh yeah, I never thought about that. <laughs> That's cool. I like learning random facts about pointless bits of trivia. Um, yeah, and that has been Thrones of Games Fashion Corner. Wink. Wink. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, where do we go from here? There's so much more violence to cover. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, green explosion, um, once they get onto the, um, shores as well, mm -hmm. like, and throughout the rest of the episode, there are just a series of cuts that are just 
devastatingly awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the first one where they run up to the wall, a guy shoves, like, a large rock off, and you see it just obliterate a dude's head. And it's that kind of violence where you give the kind of... Sh- well, I wasn't, like, giving the kind of shocked laugh of just, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's almost surprising to me that they went there and they produced mm. this, because... Like, in a few episodes, these moments have been one, two, maybe three. There were... Yeah. Probably, we're probably going to forget to name some. There was a season's worth of violence in one episode, <laughs> and it was amazing! I think that's maybe why, yeah, the finale was a bit of a snoozer. They just needed to calm down a bit after that. Yeah, fair. Just be like, okay, everyone settle. You just saw the most mind-blowing episode you'll see, possibly in this entire show. Yeah. And yeah. Tyrion, again, using his height to his advantage and just absolutely de-legging a dude uh, if i have again one complaint or one of my my third complaint that leg really comes off very easily mm. <laughs> just kind of pops it and it's like boom. <laughs> yeah for someone who only ever watched someone else chop wood with an axe I, like, like, I chopped wood once i oh, know i watched jamie do it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm not sure of the mechanics of that either because i think an axe like um it's not meant to go straight through either like it mm. is meant to sort of like dig a bit and that's why it kind of goes why i don't know i don't know weaponry yeah i don't know axe attacking i just know that you don't use a wood axe to axe people like you would a battle axe yeah and it probably would get stuck somewhere in the bone region oh yeah bones are a problem <laughs> uh and then even then the hound like cleaves a guy in twain oh it's like Wah. and then has that whole moment where a guy who's on fire runs towards him and he's just shell-shocked and that's when he pieces out of the entire battle yeah uh but then that gets sniped by Bronn, who gets some uh kick ass stabbing in yeah absolutely and i do love this contrast as well with the hound and him like having that disagreement earlier in the episode Mm. and now um yeah the hound with all his fucking menace and fucking giant sword like yeah the little quick guy with his tiny sword and arrows fucking yeah saved his hide yeah everyone's got their point of fear you know uh, the hound it's when that guy's on fire we see braun when he's in that prison cell and that girl poisons him and he's like i yeah. give up give me the antidote mm. you know no that's right um but yeah especially with the hound you know a dude on fire that's relatively un uh, scary oh. compared to like watching you yourself cleave people in half fire is his thing man <laughs> Like, not only did he do someone uh, uh, horizontally, but yep. he also went diagonally. Pretty sneaky, Hound. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, Stannis gets a do where he just kind of cleaves from the eyebrows mm. across straight off. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, like, yeah, there were two different kinds of beheadings in this. No, three. Because, yeah, we see a couple of people get straight from the neck, you know, yep. the classic. The classic. And, yeah, the dome one that Stannis did, and then fucking... Oh, and Pod! Jesus oh, Christ! Yeah. Oh, how do we not talk about this yet? So, I mean, it gets referenced later on when Tyrion, like, rewards him and all that, saying he speared a guy in the back of the head, but to see it, and I love how this was done as well, because, you know, he gets that slash and hits Tyrion, and Tyrion goes down, and then this guy just face basically erupts with the mm. spear that I also like that it breaks. Yeah. Like, he stabbed the guy, and it obviously, it snapped when he did it, and I like that. It's a good detail of that's what a person does to a weapon when you jam it right through them. Yeah, it felt a bit more real. Like, I loved a lot of the violence from this, but, like, there were certain moments like that which actually felt real, where, mm. yeah, the thing, swords going it's, straight through bones are a Yeah, bit... exactly. Like, in direct contrast to where Tyrion taps a guy on the leg with an axe and the leg comes off, yeah. this was like, yeah, a person is supposed to have a natural defense, that's what the skull is for, mm. and so you jam a weapon into it, it's going to break, and so it gives it a much more tactile sense from the fact that it had a physical cost to the, you know, the weapon and probably the armor and the effort. Yeah. You know, so when you can't, sh- when you need it to be, need it to be a surprise, when you can't show someone physically driving it forward and, and the effort there, you show the effort in the aftermath of the weapon breaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just like amazing and uh, I, I just screamed in that moment i was just like hey pod <laughs> it's my boy <laughs> yeah. it's my boy pod <laughs> oh yeah another fucking uh medal of uh honor you know he, he he's awesome he mm. has one of the greatest runs throughout the entire show yep yep uh we all love pod uh man i think any other moments of violence Oh, shall, we, shall we just troll through notes? Uh, yeah, I think violence, like you said, it's taking up most up of this episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's most of the episode. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a bit where um, Sir Old Guy... Uh, yeah, I was just the highlighting cell, that note. <laughs> yeah, is just like talking to Seesaw. I'm like, is, is, he, is he shooting his shot? Yeah. Because like, uh, he's all like, you know, a maester is here to heal, but it is also about uh, <laughs> other things that we can do. 
think boy is shooting his shot. All right, you go for it, Captain Old Guy. And then he's like, no, deadly nightshade. If you take drops of this, you'll die. Mm. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the evolution of uh, Seesaw's character and, you know, we're in Valley Girl moment at the moment. Like, in this moment, yeah, she's curt but still kind of polite with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas, yeah, in future, she's just curt. She's just she's like fuck off. She has no patience for this senile old fucking jittery fool. Mm-hmm. Like, and she doesn't hear either. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this interaction as well. As well, absolutely. Um, next up, I've got a bit where okay, so the uh, prostitute that Bron is with compliments his voice, and mm. I'm pretty sure he's actually in like an '80s band. I can't remember what it's called though. I'll look wow. it up for later. Yeah, that, that's like discovering that Ricky Gervais was in an '80s band. Hmm. Yes, imagine that. <laughs> yeah, okay, with the uh, they ringing the bells and Sanus's men on the ship to start playing drums, like drum solo. <laughs> yes, it was really cool, and it does that great thing with Game of Thrones score as well. That, um, yeah, it takes those war drums as well and then incorporates it into the score. Um, hmm. Like I even felt like they were doing that when they the army finally landed on the shores, where the score was almost incorporating the. Uh, from the army as well yeah um yeah i i don't think we say enough about how awesome the score of game of thrones it's is. true we talk about the individual songs but the score is usually amazing yeah so again i think we've had a couple of complaints where they you know uh over emote the moment the moment mm. uh but i think that's an editing choice more than the score itself oh definitely so yeah um there's a great little back and forth where joffrey is all like hound tell my uncle i gave him an order he's like loris would you tell the hound <laughs> tell the king <laughs> tell lisa i just want a glass of maple syrup like Robert, you're not not talking to lisa <laughs> bart go to your room bart tell your mother to get off my case <laughs> Uh, when they're in the like the hold of the red keep, uh, Cersei is talking to Sansa and has a moment of, "Is your red flower still blooming?" Mm. Which is our second example ever of Vag talk. What's wow. that? It's this. It's Vag talk. Not as comfortable with this being a reoccurring segment as cock talk, but sure. <laughs> hey, I'm just being fair and even. We talk about you know nudity of all kinds, whether we want to. That's true. We get to talk about. I mean, to be fair, usually we talk about cock talk when it's a metaphor for something. In this, it's quite literal. So she's. Using a metaphor to talk about a literal thing, it's not quite the same, but hey, it's, yeah. it's there. Red flower is blooming. Yep. Mm. Subtle, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, again, what, like in the room full of women, come on, some decorum, <laughs> see- Seesaw. You know, if you can't be just flat and honest there when you're in a room full of women, I guess there's one dude of ill and pain, the stone-faced dude who's just going <laughs> to murder them all. Mm. It would be really funny if he's like, look, I came here to kill you if I had to, but I do not want to listen to your lady talk, all right? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> excuse me, sorry, awkward guy in the room. <laughs> I'll uh, just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, whoops. <laughs> he just suddenly goes full office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stares at the camera yep and they have a juggler guy down there for some reason as yeah, well well that's the guy who later on gives the necklace to sansa that's used to point oh. so yeah he, he's like in the background of a few things i think uh and they're just kind of keeping him around because he's important later whether they knew that i don't know but oh i, I just assumed that i recognized him as an extra on something else yeah of course now apparently he's uh, i think the polls from one good thing were saying he's like some kind of uh well-known comedic actor in england because oh yeah yeah everyone in england gets to show up on everything soon or later <laughs> um, it's just a thing it's a very small island the national aren't english though are they no huh. there yeah. you go something weird actually on big soft titty.png uh demi mentioned that it's weird for her to think that peter dinklage is american i'm like huh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i spent so long with him yeah being an english person here that i kind of forgot that too yeah i mean and we know him best from 30 rock before this oh yeah yeah he's part of the un but um you know that's right yeah, a lot of things are like that. It's like, oh yeah. And it's like, um No, nope, forgotten. Fair enough. <laughs> yep. All good. Uh, another Cersei line that I liked anyway was um and it was about, yeah, her father oh, Tywin yeah. was like, Oh, he believes in the gods, he just doesn't like them very much. I'm oh, like, yeah. huh. <laughs> yeah. I think that might sum up my feelings. <laughs> yeah, because when they're all praying and she's like, Oh, the gods have no mercy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, because I mean, you have to remember Things like ancient Greek gods, they were like, they weren't thought of, you know, helpful. They were thought of as being all powerful and kind of dicks because they could be. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you just dealt with it and moved on. And maybe they'll help you out if they feel like it. They well, probably won't. Well, because, yeah, I mean, 
like at best, I think uh, the idea of a god not to get too far down into religious talk, mm-hmm. you know, could just be yeah, you religious know religious talk is not a segment on this show. Ah, <laughs> so it isn't. Yeah, or is it? Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> but yeah, at best, if there is, there's got to be a series of them. I don't. There can't be one. But yeah, the idea that they aren't all loving and all like you got to believe in their love and like, oh, cool. That's actually kind of. Uh, liberating (laughs) yeah to believe they're around just you know don't really care as much as you're told in other uh religions yeah but yeah what's this it's that it's religion talk (laughs) um yeah one thing i'm very curious about and god i hope we cover it is the uh old guy who seems to be in love with fire (laughs) (laughs) so when Tyrion's about to set off this guy i know when Tyrion's about to set off uh the 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 wildfire in blackwater bay Mm. some guy just runs up he's like yes here's the flame you ask (laughs) Like, like he doesn't say that, but his expression says that. He's like, oh yeah, who are you? I need your entire backstory right now. <laughs> oh, fire guy! Like, I I hope we get to see more of him. Like, I'm getting the impression that this is a very enthusiastic extra that won a competition uh, or something. I don't but... know. I, I I'm gonna assume that he's the one who like knew where the stores of wildfire were or something like that. Sure. Um, I really hope we get some explanation. I want him to be like the guy who is always suggesting fire. Mm. So they're all like, uh, so I don't know. What do you guys want to do with that? I thought we could start a fire. Look, we're not just going to start a fire. That's not a, okay. That's not much of a, you know, thing. Look, it's Valentine's Day. What do I do? Bonfire. Stop it. Joffrey's <laughs> wedding coming up. What should we fire. serve? We should give them flaming, flame mignon, no. which is actually on fire. <laughs> and bomb Alaska, which is on fire. And those shots that are on fire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Marasco cherries covered in brandy that are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> this guy with the fire. <laughs> Although the cherries sound nice. Mm. Yeah, that's what I want him to be. That guy who, like, instead of always saying, hey, what if we just got stoned instead, is just yeah. like, fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why light a joint when we can light each other? <laughs> we can light the world. If he talks anything other than this, I will be so disappointed. <laughs> and burn it down. Burn it down to the ground. Yeah, yeah he's the leprechaun from Ralph's hallucinations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so I've, if he's not at least somewhere else in this series, I'm going to be so angry, and I'll be writing a strongly worded letter to HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Your series, 12 odd years ago now. Yep. I want more fire. I want to know. <laughs> You're looking for spinoffs? I will fucking write it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm running out of notes here, um, but I did like at the end of the battle when start- it started feeling like the all is lost moment where as they were dropping the rocks, they were starting to miss as well. Yeah. Like, I think there were just some little touches yeah. like that were showing. Rocks were getting smaller and they weren't being as effective. Yeah. And just nice ways of showing the battle swinging the other way. The door almost coming down from the uh, reverse Trojan horse they were shoving into the door. What was that? That's a battering ram. With a horse head on the end of it? Yeah, sometimes they decorated the front of battering rams because reasons, yeah, sure. I guess. And again, it's the stag. That's Stannis' logo. Oh, it was a stag? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say it looked like a horse. Well, yeah. It's... Well, they couldn't give it the big, you know, normal antlers because that wouldn't mm. ram properly. So, yeah. But I do like how they landed and then flipped the boat upside down uh, mm. as cover. And that was also the cover for the battering ram. That was cool. Yeah. I'm assuming that's pulled straight from history as well. That seems like something they would do. Good tactic. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I... Yeah, total reverse Trojan horse there, where, yeah, yep. you're not trying to sneak a horse as a present in there, you're just <laughs> using it to fucking bash the door down and get in there. Yourself. Well, that was the original plan. They were like, okay, what we do is we build this horse, and then we put it on a hill, and it rolls down and rams into the doors. Awesome. So uh, then the, their base isn't at the bottom of the hill. Who who would do that? Shit. Oh, well, just climb inside of it. We'll see if they want it as a gift. Is that really what happened in that no. story? <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> no, I'm just riffing on the Iliad, because it's fun. <laughs> Thanks, history. Mm-hmm. Um, I might be out though. Yeah, no, I believe I am out as well. Uh, Sorry, I just had a moment uh, because uh, the uh, we've mentioned a couple of times that uh, Nicolaj Wasta Kalo, whoever, Jamie Lannister, uh, Nicolaj, 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 Stanislavski, <laughs> Nicolaj. Um, how I'd mentioned that he was cast as playing Joel in the Last mm-hmm. of Us series. Yeah. No. <laughs> what? Uh, that was just a, a heavily believed rumor oh, that wow. I accidentally bought in on the, the bullshit of. It was announced the other day that Pedro Pascal will be playing Joel in the HBO series The Last of Us. Who's Pedro Pascal? Uh, um, not Diego Montoya, but he killed the mountain 
that guy. I forgot what his name in this show was. Oh, oh, what the uh, Suave fucking... guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God, his name has completely left my brain. Um, Oberon Martell. There we go. Who's also the Mandalorian, apparently. Also the that Mandalorian. That dude is having a good career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and um, uh, if you haven't as well, check him out in the community. They did a table read version of Pierce's funeral where he played Walter Goggins' part, and he had such a hard time getting through the vial of semen speeches. <laughs> it's incredible. Anyway, so Pedro Pascal is playing uh, Joel, and so you didn't know this. No, no. I mean, I, I, I saw him trending on Twitter, but I don't understand Twitter yet. <laughs> You'll get there. Uh, did you see uh, whose casting choice for Ellie was trending? No. Bear Island girl. Sick. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, she doesn't need him. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> she can hold her fucking own. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Although, like, I, I mean, I don't know how old Bear Island girl was in Bear in the in the show. I just assume she was maybe 12 and therefore would be like 18 now or something. Maybe she, maybe she doesn't age like mm. Maisie Williams yeah possibly I'm just, I'm just I haven't seen it since the show so I'm curious what she looks like she needs to look about uh, 14 16 how old's Ellie roughly something uh, like that I thought about 13 or 14 in the first last of us and then yeah. definitely 18 or 19 in the second one yeah yeah that's right. All right. that's that's cool I'm looking forward to that now <laughs> yeah should we throw in the Brie news as well, or? Yeah, and no, I was going to. All right, so uh, Brianna of Tarth, whose real name I have not looked up because I couldn't be bothered. Uh, <laughs> she's Brianna of Tarth, or you know, uh, Tilda Swanson on this show, mm-hmm. uh, has been cast in uh, the set the Netflix adaptation of The Sandman by Neil Gaiman to play Lucifer. Shit, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a big role. It's only d- probably depending on what they do with the character, maybe a few episodes. But um, it's an it's a hell of an interesting pick, and the way Lucifer's portrayed in uh, the Sandman is very almost David Bowie esque in the sense like this this blonde uh, rock star kind of look. Yeah. Um. So I really like her, that pick because I imagine they're gonna play her maybe slightly androgynous. Mm. Um. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting, and I think I think she'll knock it out of the park. I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, more so than I already where it was so oh wow oh man um and, uh, maybe that's uh, our next series is yeah catching up on all the uh things that game of thrones prominent stars got cast in afterwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think and tywin lannister is in there but i forget as who but it's uh not as prominent not as interesting as a role so yeah oh interesting yeah, there we it, go uh, yes so yes that is all the things that we know of r- rumor mill wise yep uh but if that puts you out of notes and that puts me out of notes then we must ask our final question how did we get here well, BT, apparently the next episode is called The Prince of Winterfell. Uh-huh. So we are getting far away from this stuff and we're yeah. going back to the Winterfell place. Cold, and, cold area. Um, is that just Jon Snow? Uh, I'm going to guess, and sorry to not make a joke here, but this might be the one where Theon takes Winterfell. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Because we've seen him lose it, but we've not seen him take it. So that might be either him taking it or him struggling to hold it. Wow, what a short... Uh, uh, rain, if that's what it is. Yeah, not long at all. But until then, I've been BT Calloway. That's been Late Joe Neal. Goodbye. And for now, our watch is ended. <laughs>